Section 17 of the Minor Works of St. Teresa of Avila, translated from the Spanish by the Benedictines of Stanbrook. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Exclamation 16. O oh my God, my infinite wisdom, without measure and without bounds, above the understanding either of angels or men, love, who dost love me more than I can love myself, or can conceive, why do I wish for more than thou dost will to give me? Why weary myself by praying for what I desire to thee, who knowest what would be the result of all my thoughts imagine, or my heart craves for, while I am ignorant of what would profit me? Perhaps what my soul fancies would be its gain, might be its ruin. If I ask thee to free me from a cross, by which thou seekest to mortify me, what do I ask thee, my God? If I entreat thee to send me such a trial, perhaps it may be beyond my patience, which is too weak to bear so heavy a burden. Or, were I to endure it, but were wanting in humility, I might fancy I had performed some great deed, while thou, my God, didst do it all. When I seek for greater sufferings, I do not wish for what might injure my good name, which seems requisite for serving thee, although I believe that I care nothing for my honor. Yet perhaps the very means I think would hinder me, might further my one desire of laboring for thee. I could say far more, O Lord, to show how little I know myself, but as thou surely knowest this, why do I speak of it? In order that, when misery again overwhelms me, my God, and reason is blinded, I may find it written here. Often, my God, when I feel most wretched, weak, and cowardly, do I try to recall her, who called herself thy servant, who thought the grace she had received from thee would suffice to arm her against all the tempests of this world. No, my God, no, let me no longer trust to my own wishes. Will for me as thou art pleased to will, for this is my will, since all my good consists in pleasing thee. If thou, my God, shouldst will to please me by satisfying my longings, I see that I should be lost. How vain is man's wisdom! How dangerous are his plans! May thy providence supply my need, that I may serve thee according to thy will, not mine. Punish me not by granting prayers or wishes at variance with thy love, which I desire may ever dwell within me. Make me die to self. Let another, greater and better for me than myself, live in me, that I may serve him. Let him live and give me life. Let him reign that I may be his slave. My soul seeks no other liberty, for how can he be free who is separated from the Most High? What more abject or miserable serf than the soul which has broken loose from the hands of its Creator? Happy the souls imprisoned by the fetters and chains of God's gifts and mercy, and too strongly bound and helpless to free themselves. Love is strong as death and hard as hell. Oh, that we were but slain by this love and plunged in this divine hell, from whence, ah, from whence there is no hope of escape, or rather, no fear of being cast forth. But woe is me, Lord, during this mortal life, we live in constant danger of losing the life that is eternal. O oh, life, enemy of my joy, would that it were lawful to put an end to thee. I endure thee, since God endures thee. I sustain thee, for thou art his. Do not betray nor harm me in return. And yet, Lord, woe is me that my sojourning is prolonged. All time is short in exchange for thy eternity, yet how long a day, or even an hour appears, laden with the risk and dread of offending thee. Free will, enslaved by thy liberty, unless established in the fear and love of thy Creator, when will that blessed day arrive in which, absorbed in the infinite ocean of supreme truth, thou wilt no longer possess the power nor wish to sin, being freed from all misery, and united to the life of thy God? God is happy, for he knows, loves, and rejoices in himself, without the possibility of doing otherwise. He is not, nor can he be, at liberty to forget or cease to love himself, nor would such power be a perfection in him. Thou wilt enter into thy rest, my soul, when thou dost enter into closest intimacy with this sovereign good, when thou knowest what he knows, lovest what he loves, 
joying in what rejoices him then thou wilt lose the fickleness of thy will then ah then wilt thou change no more for the grace of god will have been powerful enough to render thee so perfect a partaker of his divine nature that thou wilt no longer have the power nor wish to forget the supreme good nor to cease to exult in him and his love blessed are those whose names are written in the book of life but my soul if thou art among their number why art thou sad and why dost thou trouble me hope in the lord because i will yet confess to him my sins and his mercies of which i will make a song of praise mingled with incessant sighs to him my saviour and my god it may be that a day will come when my glory shall sing to him and my conscience be no more troubled where all weeping and fear shall be no more meanwhile in my hope and silence shall my strength be rather would i live and die in the hope of eternal life than possess all created beings and riches for they must all pass away forsake me not o lord for in thee do i trust let not my hope be confounded may i always serve thee faithfully then dispose of me as thou wilt end of section seventeen end of the minor works of saint teresa of avila translated from the spanish by the benedictines of stanbrook